but welcome to my studio. I'm so glad that I was able to have y'all here today, and I'm so glad that you were able to have me. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn this canvas horizontally. I very seldom do horizontal paintings. I don't know, but I'm going to do something a little different today. Y'all are challenging me, and I'm challenging myself. So I'm going to turn that horizontally. And I'm going to get my palette ready here. I'm going to start with sky and water, but when you're painting background, and I don't want to get too technique-y here if our goal is to do art therapy. Our goal is to feel good. Um, so I'm going to have my brushes. And I'm going to find a very wide brush. Where's my wide brush? You can use a, if you're doing background, you want to use like a two inch brush or a one and a half inch brush um, to get your background going. And I don't have the one I want, so I'm going to use a smaller one just for today's demo. Um, I got some blue left. I'm just going to use the colors that are left on my palette because I try not to waste paint. Paint can be very expensive. Um, so I try very, very hard to use and recycle. So I'm going to get a little water in my cup here. And you guys tell me how I'm doing on time. I have a spray bottle and I have some water in a bottle here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray this canvas with just plain old water. Why? Because when I do sky and background, it's going to blend better. You always want to do your background first. If you're doing like a land scene or a sea scene, anything like that, you want to do background first. I'm going to spray my background. And if it runs, it's okay. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, but I just sprayed that with plain old water because I want to blend fast with my acrylic and blend well. So I'm going to, I just, I see blue and I don't even, like I haven't planned this out. Like I just, it's so, this is totally intuitive right now. Um, so I'm going to take my brush. I have a towel here to dab extra water. And I've got some blue left over from, this tree that I did, and it's a lot of blue on here. So, and I think this is, I've got some ultramarine blue on my palette, and I don't think I'm going to like the ultramarine blue. I already know that I don't think I want that color, and I've got phthalo blue. It's called phthalo cyanine blue and phthalo cyanine green, and it's like a teal almost. But I have a lot of blue here on my brush. Now, if you're not the, you could be self-taught. You do what makes you feel good. You know, this is about relieving stress. This is not about art class right now. Although it's kind of, it's kind of, um, I guess it's like a habit for me because it's art class. But I'm going to take this blue dot. Mm, that's a little bit too blue. I don't like that blue. I'm going to get some of this phthalo blue and mix it a little bit. But I have a bunch in my brush. But remember, my palette is really, really wet. I mean, I'm sorry, my canvas is really, really wet. So I'm just going to take some crisscrossy. Now that's way too blue right now, but the more I blend, and my brush should be thicker, but I don't have that one with me right now, and I need some more water in my brush. So I'm just going to spread. It's almost like a wash. And I'm going to take my spray bottle here. Right now, you need to, you're, you're, work, you're just covering the canvas. Just work with the colors that make you feel good. Work with the textures that make you feel good. You shouldn't be all going in the same direction, but I'm trying to get the edges and all that. I always paint my edges because if you can't afford a frame for right then, if you have a stretch canvas, you can hang it in your house with no frame. Um, so I always paint the edges. Continue whatever you're doing on the front, on the sides. And if you sell it and the person doesn't have access to getting it framed right away, they can go ahead and hang it. I mean, you can go ahead and hang it up. All right, I'm scrubbing. I wouldn't normally do this, but I need to get my edges. All right, well, I don't like that big wad of blue in there. So, like I said, don't be critical of yourself. Do what you feel. Do what you like. And if you have the power to change it, you don't normally go in opposite directions, but I'm just doing that to get the edge for the sake of time. I want some white because that's it's too blue right there. Um, it might not look like that on your end, but it does because I'm sitting right up under it. So 
I have a little bit of white on my palette, but I think it's kind of dry. Where's my other brush? I found my other big brush. Let's try that. It's not the one I wanted, but it's bigger. Then, yeah, I can bring that down. The bigger the brush, the more, um, the more blending you can do and the more area you can cover. So this is a one and a half inch brush. All right, now I'm just gonna still use the other brush that I had, that's like a one inch. So I want some white in there. And I just kind of smushed it with my finger and it's still wet up underneath because I had it covered up. So I just have it, you know, it's just kind of <laughs> get it on your brush any kind of way. And if you guys are painting along, um, I hope this is helping you. But I don't like, all right, I got a lot of, I'm doing this to get some of that white spread out and then I'm gonna, just beating up against the side, okay. So sky can like, you know, the sky changes. One minute the cloud can be here and it can look like this and the next minute, 30 seconds later, it's something different. All right, so I want a little bit more white on this other side over here. Just paint what you feel. If you have a picture, that's great, but you know, you don't want to copy somebody else's artwork. That's one big thing. Uh, academic integrity does work in the world of art as well. Um, you can't copy other people's stuff. You can use people's stuff for um, reference. But yeah, that's about it. All right, so I, mm, I'm gonna use little circular motions to blend that. So like I said, this is acrylic and then I'm gonna go swipey. Swiper, no swipey. So I'm gonna spray a little bit more. What I do with my spray bottle. And blend that a little bit more because, and you gotta work fast with acrylic. And I don't normally, all right, there we go. Keep it wet if you're still blending. And see, once it dries, you'll start seeing that, and that's not what I want here, but that's okay. Let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Now, I'm going to start getting down to, I left that alone, it's okay that it's blending because I'm going to cover all that up anyway. Um, I need to spray this a little bit more because I can see my watermarks. So it almost gets like watercolor. And if it doesn't blend like you want it to, add more paint, add more water, whichever one comes first. All right, um, let's get into some more. I want my water to be kind of green. So I'm just gonna take that same stuff on this brush. I'm not even gonna clean the brush. I got green here and it's phthalo green. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Just put it on there. It's already wet down here. Let me wet it some more. And I don't know what this is gonna look like. Let's watch. Okay, that's too green. But I got a foundation of green. And then I can come back in. What I'm trying to do is cover this canvas first. And then I can go back in with my detail. And sometimes the sound is great. I don't know. Hopefully that's not bothering you, but it's the whole process. You do it, you know, artists have a tendency to kind of understand each other because they know what it takes to do what they do. And I'm not really getting my edges because I'm trying to do this for you in the front. All right, so this is where my water is gonna be, kind of. So you can kind of see where my horizon line is. That's way too green for what I want. So I'm gonna come back in with some phthalo, and I think I might have to get some more. Yeah, well, no, I don't know. And this brush is getting too, I need to get more detail here, so I need to, I need to go back to that one inch brush. All right, I want some, it's still way too green. I like that phthalo, so I gotta squeeze out some more because I, I lost it. But yeah, do what you feel. Do what makes you feel good. This is about healing, whatever helps. If you like music, do that. So 
So I'm just squeezing out. I'm not going to hold this up because it's going to slide, but I've got some phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is really, really dark. Um, so I'm not going to get like a whole bunch in my brush. I'm going to wet my brush and then we'll go from there. All right. And you want to stand away and back away. I can't do it right here because I'm like in the screen here, but I want, uh, I, I can look at my reflection and see in my device. All right, that's a lot of blue on my brush. All right, that's really blue. So I just, I'm going to put it, see how it's, it's going to, it's going to lighten up as you mix it with that water. But that's too dark for what I want right now. Um, but I'm going to spread, 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 spread. And then I'm going to show you some little tricks. But I like blue. Blue is, people, my students ask, blue is probably one of my favorite colors. Love it. And you know, there's a psychology in colors. Red and orange, I'm sorry, red and yellow are supposed to make you hungry, which is why, you know, you have all these food chains that use a lot of red, a lot of yellow. Blue is supposed to be calming and peaceful. I need to be doing my edges. But I don't want to take the time and do my edges in the front of it dries. All right, so I'm just going to stop there. Now, I've laid in my background. I need to bring this up some because it's just a green stripe in there that doesn't look right. And it still needs to be blending. Long strokes will blend if you don't want your brush strokes to show. Soften it up. Make it up. Make the water in there. You don't even know where the water ends and the sky begins or where the sky ends and the water begins. But I don't want to see brush strokes right now. I just want color. So do your background first. Uh, your horizon line needs to be kind of flat. I mean, not kind of flat. It needs to be flat. You don't want it. Unless you got waves going in the background. But you know, when you're standing on the beach, you're looking at the ocean. It's flat. All right, that's pretty okay. All right, so now, the way that I blended that, it looks like clouds in the sky. There's white in some areas, blue in some areas, waterish in some areas. So I'm going to take, I want to get ripples in the water. How can I do that? I'm going to take a palette knife. Palette knives are lovely. They can they come in plastic or metal. Um, and I have different varieties here. So they're different shapes. The emotions behind the colors, it's not technically a color theory. Color theory is, is your, you know, your primary, secondaries, tertiary, um, complementary, warm, cool, analogous, um, I miss a monochromatic. That's color theory. Um, but when you think about color and the emotions behind them, that's called color psychology. So that's a whole different thing. So I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the palette knife that looks like a diamond and I'm going to, I'm just going to make little marks with some paint and you, I probably want to start with white. First of all, I'm going to wet my palette knife so that the paint flows. I'm going to take some of this white that's almost drying on my canvas. I don't really paint water, but there's people who, there are people who do, and like, they're really good. People who paint seascapes and all that, they're really good. I don't want it too wet. But the point of this is to make you feel better. And if I didn't do my art, I would not be in a good place. Um, and that's too much water there. I need to get more. So I'm, I'm giving the, the hint of waves. So the top of the waves is where the white part is. Um, I need more white. My white is drying, so let me squeeze out some more white so this can be easier for me. So when you're doing the waves, you're doing an illusion. You're not trying to draw each little individual wave unless you're just drawing one big wave. But you're doing that little foam that's on the top of the waves. So a lot of art is illusion. You're making it look like what your eye sees it as, but that's not the process that, it, that you take to get it on the canvas like that. So you're just going to make little... And if it's not um, white enough, get more white. I'm just rolling some white on the back of my canvas. I'm just making little, just everywhere. Just because you know that the, 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 the wind blows and it moves all those ripples and they're all over the place. They're not too big, they're not too small, but you want to be consistent. They're usually all horizontal. Um, 
Let's put those in there. It's an illusion. They're all over the place, little small ones. Just, I'm not even planning this out. I'm just kind of, I'm looking at my reflection over here in my device and I'm just kind of putting them where they need to be. Um, water ripples, there's no rhyme or reason, but they all are horizontal. They're parallel to the horizon line. This is totally fast. Um, so you're creating that illusion. And I'll just do a few more here. Just get some down here. But yeah, paint, draw, whatever makes you feel good. All right, so I'm, you get the point. So you, if you're, you know, you have more time and you can build up that surface if you want to. But you're making just, I, I, it's a calm day on the ocean. Here it's not, you know, too ripply, but it's ripply just enough so that you can see those ripples. Just make sure they're all going in the same direction. That's the key. It has to be consistent. Okay, does that look like water and ripples to y'all? And like I said, if it doesn't, you're not here to... Make yourself feel bad for what, it, for what it doesn't look like. You're here to express yourself. And then you get so caught up in, like, if you like your piece, you know, it's going to um, take your thoughts away from, especially if you're using a color that you really love. I love using a color that I really love. All right, let's get some seagulls in there. I'm going to take a really teeny, teeny liner brush. It's not as teeny as I want, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take... I want a dark blue, so I'm going to take a little bit of that phthalo and just a tad of black. I don't want it too black. Do I have some black over here that's already wet? I don't know. Let me get a little teeny bit of black in the three minutes that I have left. And I've got my colors all up under me in this little bucket. Well, it's not a bucket. It's like a... There we go. Ivory black. Um... It's just like a little drawer out of a, a paint organizer drawer thingy. And I just took the whole drawer out. So I want it to be really wet because I want it to be viscous. I want I don't I want the little birds. Y'all know how you drew birds back in the fifth grade? The little M in the sky. But you can still do that and make it professional. So how what am I gonna do? I want one right layer. And which way do I want it? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Steady hand. Okay, yeah, I know that's hard to see. I'm just going to do two little birds. Okay, so put your birds in there. You got your clouds in there. Um, what you can do is I can take some of that uh, white. Now, that's dry, so it might be difficult. But if I take a wet brush, dampen it. I think that's a little bit too much blue. Get all the extra water out. I think I'm going to put a cloud in there. Clouds make me happy. The best thing to do for a cloud is a fan brush, but I'm using my fan brush for oil. So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to put a hint of clouds in the sky. Um, Y'all, I don't think I've ever done a seascape ever in my life. <laughs> Maybe not, you know, not a painting. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I got a little white right there. I'm going to make a little cloud right here. But, you know, this is here to make you happy. And I'm loving this blue. And then, you know, I didn't even know where this was going. But when I start these paintings for my demos, I can come back later and do some more and finish it. And like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. And then I got a whole new painting. And then I get so involved in that. And yes, it takes my, I forgot how tired I was. Okay, so I'm just going to stop right there. Um, I need to straighten up that horizon line just a little bit. I probably need to put some more darks in there with the water because there are probably some dark areas where it's deeper. 